I'm gonna change the way that you shampoo your dog and in the process, it's gonna save you money. So whether you're a professional groomer or a pet owner, you can benefit from this hack. Let's make this simple. By the end of this video, you are going to have each step in this process down to a science so that you can keep more money in your pocket and you're actually going to be cleaning your dog more effectively. Mm. Welcome or welcome back. And if you're new here, my name is Elena and I've been a professional groomer for 15 years and I'm about to show you why you've been using your pet shampoo wrong this whole time. So let's level up your shampoo game. What exactly am I talking about here? Well, it's a technique called frothing. The premise is simple. You use a mixer, like a handheld frother, or if you want, you can use an emulsion blender, which also works really well, and you mix your shampoo with water. But hold on here, I know there's some of you out there thinking, well, that sounds silly. It's just going to water down your shampoo and make it less effective. And yes, technically, it does water down your shampoo, but most pet shampoos are actually made to be diluted. And there's even specialty shampoos on the market now for frothing in general. But frothing is not going to make it less effective. It's actually going to be easier to apply and make it so that you're using way less. So really it's gonna save you money and it's gonna do a better job anyway. The foamy mixture actually sticks to the dog's coat much better than standard shampoo methods, meaning that when you apply it, more stays on the dog and less goes down the drain. In fact, only about a teaspoon of shampoo, depending on its ability to dilute, can shampoo up to two small dogs. So that really gives you an idea about the savings. Here's some science behind it. Most shampoos are made up of emulsions, and essentially they are mixtures of oil in water. The proteins within the shampoos are what acts as emulsifiers, and they form a film or a skin around oil droplets, and that's what leads to textural or structural changes within the shampoo, which in turn is what gives it that kind of thicker consistency. It helps to think of it kind of like a ranch salad dressing. When you give it a shake, the oil becomes distributed throughout the water, giving it a creamy kind of dressing texture. Every shampoo has emulsifiers, which is why you always see suds when you scrub them in. In fact, it's the bubbles within the shampoo that allows you to lift the dirt from the dog's coat. So frothing is actually an innovative method when it comes to emulsifiers that are activated within the shampoo, causing a thick foam to form. I'm gonna do a step-by-step -step for you, so let's get into it. Here's what you need. A container of sorts, like a bowl. But if you're using an emulsion blender, you're gonna want something that's pretty deep, otherwise it'll get really messy. Even a protein shaker cups work really well, the one with the little balls in it. But I'm gonna use my handheld frother today. You're gonna wanna add a half a cup of water for a small dog and about a half a teaspoon of shampoo. Now I find this ratio works really well for most of the shampoos that I use, but you can always play around with it. You want it to be a nice thick foam, which is easy to spread. And once you are happy, you just spread it around. I'll show you on my arm how easy it is to spread. So you can see, how the shampoo just straight sticks to my skin. Very easy to determine where you've put it and very easy to spread around. I'm gonna go wash my arm quick. And here's another tip. Mixing your shampoo with warm water not only activates the emulsifiers, but takes frothing up a whole other notch. Warm water also creates more suds than cold water. After this, all you need to do is rinse once you've applied it everywhere, and then you can actually apply your conditioner in the exact same way. It does take a few seconds to froth up shampoo, so you can always pre-make it. That way, it's ready to go when you need it. I would advise against making it super early, as you do need the suds to be activated still. Also, do not keep your shampoo for longer than 24 hours. Heck, I'd throw it out way before then. And that's because bacteria can form and cause post-grooming bronchiolosis if you aren't careful. Shampoo storage is actually no joke. And I'll link a video that I do have on this topic already, and I'll link that above and below in the description, but always use up your shampoo and toss it by the end of the workday, so typically that's about eight hours for most people. Now you can apply this mixture on a wet or dry coat, but it will result in a better clean if you apply it onto a dry coat. 
And the reason is the one that we touched on earlier, and that is that water dilutes the shampoo further. Plus you have the added benefit that the suds will stay where you are placing them, leading to a better clean on a dry coat as opposed to a wet one. So here's the benefits laid out for you. Frothing activates the emulsifiers and the sulfates in the shampoo so that they can perform their best, leading to a cleaner dog. Frothing uses less water and product, which is going to save you money. It ensures better rinsing, so you don't leave any of the product on the dog's skin, which can cause dandruff and itchiness. It also ensures that your dog is adequately shampooed because you can actually see where it's applied very clearly, as you saw on my arm, so that you're not missing any spots. But now that your dog is clean, obviously the job is done, right? Well, not quite. You might be tempted to reach for a towel, but I've got a better way for you to get them dry. And it's definitely budget friendly. Check out this video right here where I help you pick the best dryer on the market for an affordable price tag.